as the shepherds were watching over their flock at night, God announced to them that the Savior had been born. The Savior was born for everybody. You know, you know, God is concerned about everybody. God's concerned about broken people. God's concerned about hurting people. God's concerned about lost people. God is concerned about good people who never really intend, attend church, but, but yet they are good and they are gentle people. And don't you know God is concerned about them? Sometimes we think God is only concerned about us. But God is concerned about everybody. You know, there's some good people who never come into church, but yet they are good, loving, kind people. And God is concerned about them also. God's concerned about some people who have given up on life. And you know, during the holiday season right now, this is a difficult time for a lot of people. You know, and, and, and God wants to remind them, God wants to remind them that, that, that I came for you too. I came for you even at a time of, of feeling lonely and feeling depressed and feeling empty. I came for you too. I came for your situation. Those who are scarred by life, God said, I came for you. What troubled me about this story, like many, was that God did not announce it in the church first. Hmm. You know, the church is God's dwelling place, and it's the holy of holies. It's the place where the glory of God is. But God did not announce it here first. You know, maybe, brothers and sisters, maybe sometimes when God tries to convey a message to us, sometimes maybe that message gets clouded. Yes. Sometimes our agenda comes before God's agenda. Our likes and our dislikes, sometimes they get in the way. The needs of God's people sometimes become secondary. The message, you know, sometimes in, 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 in the body becomes bad news rather than good news. See, I've discovered over the years I've been a Christian that this thing is not about us. It is about Jesus. And sometimes we forget why he came. He didn't come just for Kenny and, and Brother Mallory and Eric and, and Deborah, but he came for everybody. He came for lost people, hurting people, broken people, people in pain, hopeless people, even those who are killing one another on the street, lonely people, people who have given up. But God wants to bless all of us. And you know, if he didn't come for those kind of people, we wouldn't be here today. If he didn't come for those kind of people, because all of were separated from God. We were lost. We were far from where God wanted us to be. But thanks be to God, there was some good news even when we were in the midst of bad news. God reminded us that I came for you in all of your mess up and all of your falling short of the glory of Almighty God. I came for you. I was born for you. You got to remember who I was, who I am. I was Adam's redeemer. I'm Moses' I'm Abel's vindicator. I'm Isaac's home. I'm David's shepherd. I'm the rose of share. I'm Mercy's lawyer. I'm still away out of nowhere. I'm still your hope for tomorrow. And notice what happened when the shepherds heard the good news. They decided, Alonzo, to go see for themselves. Don't you know there's something when you hear some good news? See, you see, it wasn't enough for the angels to say it. They had to go see this thing for themselves. Brothers and sisters, people will go see for themselves when they hear some good news. <laughs> That they will go see for themselves. Because in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, people are still searching. Yes. See, you see, I'm not convinced that everybody in the world, that 80 percent, that they are so anti-God and so anti-church that they're not looking for something. They're looking for what Jesus has. We, we have to we have to be able to convey the gospel in such a way that they want to come and see for themselves. Yes. And sometimes we gotta stop acting 
same life. We've been holy all of our lives. And we've been righteous all of our lives. And we've been on the mountain all of our lives. Because that's a lie and the devil knows it. You know, we got to be real with people. And we got to let people know. I haven't always been where I am now. And even though I'm in a place now where God has done something with me, I still have my day when I fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. God wants us to be in relationship. God wants a relationship with you. He wants it with good people who never come to church. God wants a relationship with people who've been broken in life. God wants a relationship with the very people that you hate or dislike. God wants a relationship with them. God wants a relationship with people who never acknowledge him. God wants a relationship with people, you know, uh, who, who feel left out and left out of, of the body of Christ. God wants a relationship with them. Yeah. God wants a relationship with the people sometimes we cannot forgive. Well. The people that get on our last nerve, God wants a relationship with them. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, do I get on God's last nerve? Oh. And sometimes I wonder, do we get on God's last nerve? Yeah. God wants a relationship with all of us. God, God wants a relationship with those who have sinned and messed up. He wants a relationship with the racists and the sexists and those who, who are engaged in classes. God wants a relationship with us. He wants a relationship with us because we don't always treat each other right. We don't always say the right things. But still God wants a relationship with us. Sometimes our intentions are not right. But God wants a relationship with us. Because God understands that we are weak. He understands that we are frail and we fall short of the glory of God. But God wants a relationship with us. And it's that kind of God that I want to go see. See, when they got to Bethlehem, they, they found Jesus lying in a manger. And, and notice what, what happened was, you know, they began to spread the word about this child. And, and don't you know that when God has been good to you and when God has brought you a mighty long way, we ought to be able to spread the word about the goodness of God. But not just with our lips, but with how we live our lives. There ought to be light in the midst of us. Because I've discovered that Satan wants me to stay the same. Satan wants me, Satan wants me defeated. He wants me hurting. He wants me to lose my faith. He wants me to give up on God. But when this child has changed your life, your circumstances cannot defeat you. Your troubles cannot keep you down. Your pain cannot take away your peace. Your worries cannot rob you of his joy. Your mistakes won't burden you down. And then what I've discovered is that, that, that when I began to really think about, you know, the story of Christmas, I, you know, it, it keeps reminding me as I get older that, that, that this thing is, it is not about a Christmas tree. It, and it's not about giving gifts on Christmas. And it's not about none of those things because when I began to think about why he came, he came to save us. He came to guide us and to help us and to heal us and to protect us. Jesus came to walk with us. Brothers and sisters, as you celebrate Christmas, and I know we're getting closer and I know that we are already spending our money on gifts to others. But you got to remember that it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about that. It's not about whether you get something from somebody else or not. It's not about that. Because if nobody gives you anything, if you wake up that morning and you still in your right mind, I'm glad they went to Bethlehem. 
my bread. I discovered my water. I discovered my strength. I discovered my shield. I discovered my help. I discovered my hope. I discovered my life. Yeah, he's my day. He's my keeper. He's my friend. He's my lawyer. He's my doctor. He's more my soul than the day before. Church, have you went to Bethlehem? Do you know him for yourself? Me. He moved me. He would trouble. He touched me. 